Hey, hey, folks, welcome back to Advent of Code in F Sharp. Day 20 already, or no, 21 already. Uh, this is going to be a recap, not a live coding session. As part two, well, <laughs> part two was something. Uh, day 21 is step counter. Let's take a look at, at what we had to do. Uh, as a quick reminder, it was the one where we got a grid with garden, plots, and rocks, and a starting location. And we need to figure out in like in 64 steps at what gardens can uh, the elf get starting from this starting location and you could backtrack you could do everything so that sounded like hello breath first with like a uh, limited uh, path length of 64 or an exact path length of 64 so that's exactly how i uh, modeled or solved part one at least i did breath first search so if you take a look at uh, what i'm doing Let's take a quick look at the code. Uh, this is the, have been, has been the year for Array2D for me. I used to use a lot of uh, maps and uh, lookup tables for my grid problems, but actually Array2D is way faster. And once uh, I get my head around uh, off by one uh, errors, <laughs> or I accept them in my life again at least, uh, they're not too bad to work with. So uh, I work with my 2D arrays. Uh, I needed a couple of helper functions today to figure out uh, location of an element to find the starting location and then to uh, get an element out of my array and there's some out of bounds things and if you do a try get which like returns nothing if we're out of bounds and returns something if we are in bounds we could easily use like all the um, list.choose uh, functions that filter out nonce for us for free so that's why I have this option type here but we'll see that in just a second. Parsing is really easy. Input is a, for me, is a list of lines of strings, which is a, a string is a sequence of characters. So with this is a list of a list of something. You can just give this to the Array2D helper function to generate your uh, Array2D of characters. And I just uh, find my starting location. And then I uh, map using the Array2D map function, which goes over every element in my array. and. Uh, calls this map function so that's a very elegant way to parse um, 2d grids in f sharp just call array 2d and then map every element to things if you want to parse more than uh, just this character so that's what i ended up doing as you can see the starting location is not a starting location uh, for uh, our navigation purposes it's a garden of course because we can re revisit it that's a hard R <laughs> for me to do. Okay, so this was uh, the parsing part. Really easy, really straightforward. And reachable is a helper function that takes a location and a grid and returns like everything that's reachable. And if you do any graph algorithms, you will recognize these four orthogonal offsets. And this is what I was saying. If you have a function that returns a, an option, you can do... Uh, list.choose to filter out the nonce so you only get uh, the ones that return some value so that's how i end up with a list of coordinates uh, but all you see here are like options and options that's how that works and this is i think my breath first algorithm yeah so this is uh, taking a set of this is the queue actually for breath first this is the depth and if we ended at the 64 steps we end and we return the current set of nodes we can reach and otherwise we uh, take every element in that current iteration in that queue and run our breath first algorithm on it or a reachable uh, function so it's not really yeah it, it is breath first uh, and yeah that was pretty straightforward pretty basic uh, for part one at least <laughs> here we go again because part two oh boy uh, part two was the first day that uh I didn't i was not able to solve it on my own without help and then i took a look at uh, solutions mega thread and some people were doing it with parity like the even and the odd numbers and there were these checkerboard diagrams they were all really interesting and they all seemed like a whole lot of work <laughs> uh, but that's a, a, one of the approaches i saw the one with the parity and the counting of different shapes of squares that's a really interesting approach uh, if you also uh, struggled with part two uh, but a lot of other people solved it using like a uh, linear or a quadratic uh, regression so uh, and i won't even try to explain it because i only understand half of it i have like some intuition uh, but i cannot explain it so i'm just going to point you to the subreddit and uh, 
if you're still uh, working on this problem. Uh, but the idea is, uh, if you take some, uh, take a look at the input, so not even the example, the example does not have this property, but the input has some interesting properties where uh, uh, if you take a look at the starting location, you can travel actually uninhibited. There are no rocks to your left and your right, and there are no rocks above and below. So this means that uh, if you were to go right every time or eastward every time, there are, nothing is stopping you. So you can, in what is it, 64, 65 steps, you can reach the end of your graph, no problem. And this is for every, like, it's an infinite grid. So this is true for every uh, 65 steps you take. And if you look at, uh, if you generate a couple of depths, you'll see that uh, the uh, the nodes you can visit are actually like a, a diamond shape outward of the starting location. And it's like a pool of paint that spreads slowly, slowly, slowly outward. So yeah, I could get like some kind of intuition. Okay, this is uh, spreading out quadratically. It's in two dimensions and it's spreading out. So it's like a quadratic function. And that's how far I got. So I get like intuitively why uh, doing a quadratic uh, regression on, on, on uh, some of those uh, outputs would work. But for the life of me, I cannot explain why. Uh, so I'm not even going to try. <laughs> I am I'm going to show you uh, actually uh, how I ended up solving it, which is uh, with uh, Google Drive <laughs> uh, or Google, what's it called? The spreadsheets. Advent of code. Where is it? Day 21. There we go. Um, so I have a graph here somewhere. Yeah, so I have my fit here. Um, if you take a look at Reddit, people uh, figured out like, okay, there are like uh, the 65 is the number of steps you can take horizontally. So that's like a, a phase, something cyclical. And uh, the width is 131, I think. So given those things, you could uh, figure out uh, the number of reachable steps or, or the number of reachable gardens for this many steps. And if you know three points, you can do a quadratic fit, uh, given something called Lagrange polynomials. But uh, there's an easy formula. Actually, it's just this uh, to figure out the components of this quadratic form formula. And if you have three points, you can uh, uh, like reverse engineer the A and B and C components of this formula. And once you have this formula, you can fill in the, uh, uh, the, the following step, which is some kind of modulo division mad madness with the input, which was a huge number. Yeah, this one, 26 million, 501,000. So again, I'm not really sure. Uh, I think we divide. Yeah, I don't, I'm not really sure where this number comes from. So as you can see, I'm just like, I'm not cheating, but I'm cheating. I just took a look at the Reddit, <laughs> just got it over with because this was way beyond me. I mean, look at this quadratic fits, but uh, otherwise uh, Mike Malgren would never halt. So yeah, that's how I solved part 20 or day 21 part two with a lot of uh, only half understanding what I was doing and I don't actually feel ashamed because it was really hard. Yeah, if you manage to solve this on your own, my hat is off to you. This was <laughs> way beyond me. Uh, and if you're still struggling with this, I would suggest taking a look at the Reddit. There's a lot of smart people out there that have solved it and have good read write-ups uh, about why uh, it works, but it was a bit beyond me. So uh, I hope uh, uh, you make, can more, make more sense of it. Uh, and otherwise you can just uh, struggle along as I did and just fill in some formulas. That also works. <laughs> so here's me hoping that the next couple of days won't be this hard because the last two days have been rough, rough. I would just like some programming puzzles now, please, pretty please. Uh, that's all I have for Advent of Code and F-Sharp, day 21. Hope to see you again next time. Bye-bye.